right now I'm just kind of was actually making some turns there following contour lines on my electronics to where it looks like there's a little drain a little ditch it's gonna run in and kind of curve and go to the back of this which is a natural highway for fish moving up the spawn water temperatures 52 59.25 right now and climbing we actually saw 61 over there so uh, you know I'm looking for those highways right now even though it's cold outside that water's warm those fish want to move back to the back on today's episode of the fisherman's handbook we'll be following Wade Middleton and Clark Winlet as they fish the same body of water around the same time of year the buck bass are moving up shallow to spawn and bites are a plenty. Find out how to catch these fish and stay tuned later as the focus turns from just getting bites to catching the fish of a lifetime. You know, we just put our boat in the water and fishing over the top of grass. And you know, a lot of times you kind of look at the water clarity, but a jerk bait can be a really good off option. I'm often asked about you know, how to catch, how to catch fish, how to catch a lot of fish, how to catch big fish, what's my favorite baits, and I'll be honest, there's not, you know, there's no pat answer to that. I, I've never come up with one thing that just says, man, this is the end all be all. Uh, there are certainly techniques and baits that I favor. Down there, fish. Right on the inside of that. He thinks he's bigger than he really is. He's not that big. And just hooked outside his mouth. You know, when you get fish moving back to the backs of some of these pockets, we're looking at him. Hello! You know what that means? He wants to go back to spawn. You get them moving back like this, and they hit that first pile of grass or break line before they go spawn, you can have a lot of fun with a lot of different baits. I mean, you can crank them, you can. Those soft plastics, swim baits, and they're staged up right before that spawn. Fishing is easy. You know, a lot of times you hear guys talk about drains or guts that they're fishing. Well, what is that? Well, what it is is, is a small depth change. It's not much. It, it could be a bigger depth change, but a lot of times it's just real subtle, say from you know, four to six feet back up to four feet. And those fish a lot of times will be right on the edge of it. Sometimes there's grass along the edges of those guts. Sometimes there's stumps. Sometimes there might be, you know, gravel or shell. It can be just about anything, but the, the little gut is kind of the highway into the area. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big giant creek channel. What I'm talking about is kind of a flat place. Where I'm fishing right here is really flat and then all of a sudden, bam there's just a little gut right in the middle of this right now and i'm fishing along the edges of that gut you can catch them really good east texas sam rayburn toledo bend livingston all those great lakes you hear people talk about guts or drains that's where they catch those big fish especially free spawn you can get a lot of bites in them just look for really subtle depth changes fishing right in the middle of this drain right here God, look how poor he is. Like, man, he was hungry because he bit that thing hard, but God, he's terrible looking. But we're fishing right in the middle of this drain. And you know, a lot of times these drains are just so subtle. Looks like a big open bay with nothing in it, but the, but the, um, but the grass or something will make a, a little ditch through there. And a lot of times on the edges of that ditch, you can really catch them. Coming up after this quick break, we take a closer look at Panoptic's live scope and how it helps anglers find fish located in deeper grass edges. That's where the fish are hiding out and Wade and Clark are on a mission to find them. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus, free two-day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. 
groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. You know, when you're fishing grass early in the year, a lot of times, one of the things you're thinking about is, is am I gonna fish the outside edge or am I gonna fish the inside edge? Well, what happens with grass is, is say, like say deep hydrilla, it'll grow, it might grow out in 20 feet. The outside edge is 20 feet. So in 24 feet, there's no grass. 20 feet, there starts being grass and then it starts going up and then it'll go up and then eventually there'll be an inside edge of the grass where a lot of times the fish actually spawn on that inside edge, those little sand holes on the inside edge. What you're trying to do as a fisherman when you get out there is figure out where those fish are. Are they on the outside? Are they up over the top? Or are they on the inside? That is a huge key pre-spawn. Come here fish, little bitty guy. <laughs> Sitting out here at the beginning of that, you can see a little bit of grass popping up on the electronics. Man, that fish got that bait way down in there before I ever felt that bite. And uh, you can see that water, the grass coming up now 15 feet right there. Go back. And these fish are staging right out on the outside of that. Oop, there he goes back down. I actually watched him on the live scope. That's so cool. You know, we're talking about electronics, pan optics, live scope. One thing about pan optics that most guys don't really talk a whole lot about is, yeah, you can see fish, yeah, it works really great in deep water, but I use it in shallow water, especially looking at objects or vegetation. A lot of times, if I'm going down a grass line that I don't know, I'm panning side to side. I can see clumps, I can see edges, I can see taller grass, shorter grass. I can see all of that stuff, and all I gotta do is, to me, it's just kind of become second nature. Wherever I'm panning, that's what I'm looking at. And so as you look, like right there, that's just a hard reed line right there. I look to the left, that's a big grass clump right there to the left. So if I want to cast, I just cast right at it and then I'll reel my bait right over that grass clump. So a lot of times it just helps you. If you're fishing the outside edge, it tells you right where the outside edge up ahead of you is, not after you've gone over it. A huge, huge key knowing what's going on in front of you. Now you can see the drop off and a little bit of scattered grass. And there's the scattered grass right out here on the bottom. It's not real tall. You can kind of see there's a couple of fish down in there with it right now. Let's crank the edges of this. We've managed to pick up a couple fish coming in here. And there's some fish right. You see those brighter pieces at the very front of it? Those are fish right there in the grass. They're not real big, about the same size we've been catching. I was thinking all the males have kind of moved back here to get ready to do their thing. Right there, a little skinny. Skinny guy. Skinny guy. I am literally just, boy, that is a long, old, skinny fish right there. Hooked in a manner that will get you and get you bad. Hey buddy, I'm gonna grab the pliers. I look male, old male, probably. Hey, 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 hey. I wanna let you go and grow up so that you can help make babies. All I'm doing is using my electronic setup to follow fish, follow grass beds, really, and blindly cast to the edges of them and throwing a, my little favorite crankbait, actually, a little Spro, little John MD and uh, just ticking the edges of that grass and kind of mixing it up. Sometimes I'll go shallow and hit some of the areas with little jerk baits and wacky worms. And other times I'll get out here and 
crank a little bit, just kind of rotating them back and forth and catching fish. We've been catching fish and getting bites basically since we started. And uh, in any fishing trip, that's all you can ask for. You know, when I'm working out over that outside edge, a lot of times I'm fishing, I might be throwing a crankbait. I love moving baits in the pre-spawn. I may be throwing a crankbait, I may be throwing a big spinner bait, a swim bait, or maybe if I feel like the fish are a little bit lethargic, I'll throw a jerk bait. Gosh, one hit it right there. I'll throw a jerk bait. Basically, a jerk bait is something that pause, pause, and it sits there. Pause, pause, and it sits there. And that's a good bait to use during the pre-spawn. Anything you can throw down there winding, those fish want to be up on the top of that outside edge. You know, one thing that that tends to happen pre-spawn is, is those fish, they tend to get around stuff, up around stuff. They want to suspend, and especially in grass. We're fishing over hydrilla right now. It's not a real big one, but fishing over hydrilla right now, and basically just fishing a jerk bait around it. The other things I could do is get a crankbait down in it, get a you know a vibrating jig down in it, maybe a swim jig through it, maybe a swim bait over the top of it. But but you got to remember those fish in the pre-spawn they want to be up high in the water call. After the break, we reach the midpoint of the day and have yet to find more quality fish. Is it user error or just the way it's going to be for this fishing trip? Find out after the break. What are them sons of fishies up to now? Fellas, I give you the force trolling motor. It is the most powerful, the most efficient on the water. Yep. Most powerful. We're really in trouble now. And it's quiet, too. You can't swim here. What a dumb bass. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four-strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock-solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Engel, the original high performance cooler. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by TH Marine, from transom to trolling motor. Well, we've had a pretty good start to the day. Caught a lot of fish. Water temperature's actually falling a little bit in some of these bays. High today's only supposed to, do. I mean, it's 40 when we got here. Not supposed to get above 55, but it sure hadn't slowed the fishing down. We've got them on cranking a little bit, got them on some finesse techniques, got them twitching soft plastic dirt baits. We're gonna run over here to another spot, see if we can't find some that are a little bigger, which is probably a mistake to leave biting fish, but we're gonna give it a try. You know, when you start talking about having fun bass fishing, uh, there's no question about it. You want to get bites. I mean, that's what that's what having fun fishing is all about. You want to get a lot of bites. Uh, size in that scenario doesn't necessarily matter. It's just about getting that tap, getting that blow up, feeling one strike your bait, and setting the hook and reeling them in. Coming up. <laughs> Another clone. Another same sizer. They are mean and green out here. Come here, buddy. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Hello! <laughs> I 
All right, we're gonna take a picture of this one because this has been the status quo for the day. Just so everybody has one so we can see him and share him. So Bracey's gonna put the camera down for a second. We're gonna take a still photo and then we're gonna let this one go. Choosing baits and gear to be able to catch numbers and the biggest fish of your life. I mean, there's there's planning that has to go into that. Uh, if you want to get a lot of bites, you can downsize your baits, uh, fish with lighter line, um, and, and you're going to find greater success. I've got these Johnny Morris Carbon Light rods, the 2.0 here, and I really like them. Matched up with the same reel under the same name and number. And what I found is this is a real balanced, real well balanced setup. And they come in a lot of different lengths. I've actually got the 6.6 six in medium right here. I can cast it a country mile. It's got a smooth drag. The rod's got a great tip for this exact presentation, but then they also come in a variety of other sizes. You know, like I've got a seven foot rod down here with a medium heavy that I've, I've got a, a lead shaker on, a lightweight lead shaker for throwing a finesse worm around the rocks or brush or wherever. I've got a six foot nine one rigged up with a drop shot. I've got all kinds of different, I got a wacky rig tied on as well. And, and I can match this setup and the rod weight and action uh, to a variety of different applications, real simple. And you know, a guy could use the same rod and the same reel combination for all those techniques, but I really like to match up to get the best action. The rod, the reel, the line, and the, and the, the technique as good as I can. And that's why I've got that seven foot medium heavy rig for my, my lead shaker or a, any of the shaky heads. I think that's got the backbone and the sensitivity to be able to handle that type of fishing, whereas this rod here has a lot more of a limber tip, which is what I like to use when I'm throwing these smaller little soft plastic jerk baits to impart more action on them. And, and also, so I don't take the bait away from the fish when he bites it. God, look at that time. Maybe we didn't outthink ourselves. He's mean. Sometimes you gotta dig down into the rod locker and grab a different bait. Boy, I mean, there's tons of little eel grass. Come here, buddy. Below us right here, and I just took a little soft plastic jerk bait and went to twitching it, and I mean, he crushed it. I took it way down in there. That didn't take long, this little spinning rod out there to a little soft plastic jerk bait with just a small nail weight in it, a little trocar hook, and I mean, he jumped all over that rig. And next on the Fisherman's Handbook, we conclude this episode centered around pre spawn fishing. One thing to remember is that the big fish are always lingering close by. Stay tuned for more. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out a spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite. He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, yeah, good one. If you're ready to be that guy, get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. When you spray on a layer of Sawyer's permethrin insect repellent, you've just sprayed on adventure. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Probably one of the number one questions I get, you know, what line do I use? That's a big debate. For every tour out there, everybody's debating which line. I choose the simple side. My choice of line is Sunline. And my favorite lines to use is Sunline. How all can you use it? Anywhere you want to. Anywhere there's water and bass, it's good. Walleye, catfish, trout, speckled trout, know, sharks. There we go. Uh, I don't say this unless I think it's true, but honestly, it's the best in the market. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products, 
we keep you outdoors. Secret Lures, the secret is out. And by Wiley X, go confidently. You know, when you pick a day to go fishing a lot of times, it's pretty common, you know, that people want to run out when you have a bluebird picnic weather day. And I actually think that's the, the worst decision you can make. I want to go out when we got low pressure and there's a front in the area. Obviously you want to be safe and pay attention to weather, make sure it's not going to deteriorate to put you in a bad situation. But when you find these little bit colder days in the, in the early spring, uh, where there's clouds and low pressure and maybe a threat of rain, I just, well, it just seems like to me the fish bite. They're aggressive and you can catch them on a variety of baits when you get in that. And that's why I got so many baits in that rod locker right there. There's one. Come here, fishy. You didn't grow up in the 30 minutes that I left and came back. It's just fun. Just absolutely fun to get out wet a line and get bit. You know, there's days when you're gonna catch big ones and there's days when you're gonna catch lots of little ones, but at the end of the day, it's all fun. Goodbye. We'll see you next time. I can do this. When I'm getting bit, I just, I can do it all day long. It's just fun. And you, you feel like you're gonna figure out how to catch a bigger one and things to do. And sometimes you just don't. I think as fishermen, uh, we, we have to understand that we, you know, we've got to set our goals realistically. I mean, if you live up north, the odds of catching a 10 pound fish are not that good. You know, so your, your goal is a six pounder. You catch a six pounder, it's like catching a 10 pounder down in Texas. It's just the reality of that fishing deal. If you want to go catch a hundred fish, but you're fishing in a lake that doesn't have a large population, you're not going to catch a hundred. I don't care how good you are. It's just the reality of, of those types of fishing situations. You've got to be where those fish live to a lot of times to meet the goals you may set, whether it's catching a large amount, catching a big one, or catching you know the one fish of your entire life that is over 10 pounds. Fishing the outside edge of the grass is a pretty big fish, I think. And a lot of times, A lot of times when you're fishing grass lakes, you sometimes you're on the inside, sometimes you get on the outside. And a lot of times, pre-spawn like this, those bigger fish, they, they not hook very good. They get on the outside edge before they come in to spawn. That one. <laughs> That's awesome. Outside edge of the grass, throwing a Strike King 5XD. Man, look at the size of that fish. That is awesome. Pre-spawn, sometimes you just gotta think inside edge or outside edge. Big ones can be in both places. This one was on the outside. Well, sometimes you just never know when that big bite might come. You just have to keep chunking and whining, stay focused, and be ready when that fish finally bites. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.
You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube. But I completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.